lift. We're actually sucking the lift. We're actually sucking the lift. No, we're generally sucking the lift. Yeah, it's my fault. We're actually sucking the lift. I'm like panicking. It's the type of you gotta be ready for it mentally. You just wait. As long as this bitch is on the first pose, I just, I just did a dance in front of everyone. I just waited and, and paced around for her to get here. I'm so excited. And it took all of 15 minutes for her to be pissed off at me about something that I cannot control. What's going on, people? We are back again with another moving mad video. And this one right here, as you saw, is all about Rob and Sophie. And I can promise you now, I've got a bone to pick with Rob. You know, <laughs> I am sick and tired of seeing men on this freaking show that do not have their shits together, that are out here too busy putting their energy into finding a woman just to please them, shall I say, rather than putting their energy in actually sorting out their own life first before actually bringing a woman into their life. It's, it's, it's very, very annoying. I mean, look at this way. For me personally, I'm one of these people that if I'm going through a bad spot, I would rather go for it alone. I don't want to bring no one down with me. If I'm going to bring someone into my life, I'm going to make sure it's at a time when I know that I'm in a very good position. Okay. Point blank period. Because no way in hell am I going to bring someone in my life and, you know, um, feel like as if I am baggage to them. You see what I'm saying? But we've got the situation here, as you saw, they were an elevator and straight off the bat, the elevator is already broken. So therefore, naturally, if you come from a lifestyle where an elevator has never broken your life like me personally, and it finally breaks for the first time, you're going to panic. And the fact that the way he's not even looking to reassure her and to calm her down is absolutely outrageous. He, want, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to take any accountability whatsoever for the fact that he has brought her into a household where the elevator does not work properly. And then rather than, you know, taking account of the before it, he'd rather just moan about it and put some type of blame towards her direction as if she's the one that, you know, um, lives in this apartment when it's his choice. Now, also on top of that, he's complaining about the fact that he proposed and he therefore he expects things to go a bit more differently and all that kind of mumbo jumbo, bloody daddy, 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 da. To be honest with you, should he have proposed to hell to the freaking no? Should they be engaged hell to the freaking no? I mean, listen, to be fair, the engagement was her freaking dumbass idea because she's an idiot of her own kind, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. That's probably not going to be this episode, but right now, this episode, we are talking about robbers. Rob is the one that is moving absolutely mad, absolutely berserk, absolutely not accountable. That's exactly how he's moving, not accountable. OK, not playing his role. Now, li listen to me here. All right. If you were going to meet someone abroad and then they are going to fly all the way from their country to come and be with you, wouldn't you want to make sure that before they get there, you've got your life together? Fair enough. She may be an influence and fair enough. She may be able to also make money while she's even there because she doesn't have to work for it, because she doesn't have to wait for a work visa, which is good. But understand this, though, you're bringing someone into a country that you live in, that you know that they cannot actually work in if they needed to. And yet you're in a position where you're unable to even provide for them. Let's just let that sink in. That already tells you how this guy is not in the best of places. He's living in a property, an elevator that's already broken. He's living in a property where you have to leave the property just to go and use the bathroom. Okay. Which is absolutely outrageous. <laughs> you know, and he thinks that the way he's got things right now, is okay. He thinks that the way he's got his life right now does not re revolve around him having any accountability for the fact that he may have just put her in a position that just generally is not a good position at all. I'm just saying, look at it this way. Look at this way. Look at this way. Now, I don't know her motive for, for being with the, for being with Rob. That is something that we are still trying to figure out. But I'm going to tell you this motive. Rob is 32. Sophie is, thir is tw 23. Nine years apart. Generally speaking, generally speaking, not all the time, but generally speaking, a lot of the time when women seek to be with an older man is because of a stability that he can bring. And usually that stability is the financial stability because he's a man that predominantly has already been through his life. He's got his work. He's got his career sorted out. He's got all these things. And therefore, a woman knows that she's going to be looked after. You know, right? Stability wise. Generally speaking, that's why women look for a man that's older. Right? Generally, not all the time, but that's what happens. <laughs> Now, again, we don't know what her gender is, but it actually bothers me that he's looking to it bothers me that he's that he wants to be with a younger woman, but yet he doesn't even have his shits together. By the time you're 32, you want to make sure that you've got some of your shits together. By the time you're 30, you should want to make sure you got some of your shits together. So therefore, if you decide that you want to bring a woman into your life, especially a younger one, you need to be in a position where you can provide, right? But you know what, though? <laughs> it's what he says next that I found very freaking interesting. A lot of shootings happen in that area. It does. I lived in way worse neighborhoods. 
this is not that bad. It's really not. Well, for someone from England, where we don't have any gun crime or anything that Y'all don't have guns. Yeah, exactly. Well, you don't have guns so much. Not the perfect spot. And I wish I could give her more. I wish I was I had that already right now, but I don't. So I'm gonna move forward and just stay positive and let so, okay, first and foremost, it is very weird to me personally. If I was in a neighborhood and all I'm hearing is gunshots and police everywhere, I'd be nervous too. But again, though, no. what is he not doing? He's not reassuring that everything's going to be okay. Why? Pardon me. Why does he have an issue with reassurance? Why does he have an issue with accountability? Bro, you brought her to a neighborhood that really and truly, in my opinion, you shouldn't be bringing her to, personally. You know, again, this is this is, this all goes down to having your shit together. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. Sometimes we've got to live where we live, which is fine. But uh, the fact that he hasn't reassured her that it's not that deep doesn't make any sense to me. The fact that he wants to laugh it off and act like it's nothing and as if it's a normal thing, which, yes, it may be, but that's a normal thing to you, not to her. You need to reassure so she at least she feels safe. Another thing that women look for in a man, regardless whether he's older or not, is a man that makes her feel safe. A man that can reassure her. This guy doesn't do that in this situation here, which is very annoying. But then also on top of that, this is the part that obviously I said what he says next. Mm -hmm. This is the part where he even talks about how he knows he has not got his life together. But you know the funny thing about it is that when he says that he hasn't got his life together, he's like, but at the same time, I've got to push away all this negative energy. Excuse me. But you understand something here. If there's any negative energy coming from Sophie, it's going to be, be, be because of you. It's because you've done nothing to help her in any way. You've done nothing to reassure her, but everything's going to be okay. You was in an elevator stuck. What do you do? You moaned about it and you complained about how it wasn't your fault rather than reassuring her that it's going to be okay. And then also on top of that, you then complained about the fact that you proposed and the way she's behaving is unacceptable. Again, that's your, that's still like, no, there's still kind of bit as you taken from yourself. And then also on top of that, we're now driving around, we're hearing gunshots, we're seeing police everywhere. And again, in take, instead of taking responsibility of reassuring her, what do you do? You talk about, oh, this is just normal. This should be okay. Okay, bloody daddy 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 da and then now on top of that you get to the full circle where you actually admit that your situation is not great but instead of saying that hey you know what even though my situation isn't great and i should have really waited until it was better before i actually bore here well you know what? i bought here anyway and if she wants to be negative well then it's so be it the qu <laughs> if he had tried to reassure this whole time and she was downplaying him different conversation different conversation but he has not tried once, not even a little, little, little bit to be like, it's okay, babe. Not a single way, not a single time. All he wants to say is it's not my fault that I live in a broke. It's not my fault this happened. Yeah, but this is normal to me. Okay, I know I'm not in the best position, but uh, let's just push away all the negative energy, even though he is the negative energy. <laughs> Now, of course, last episode, we assumed that maybe, maybe, maybe Sophie's using him. There is that potential, you know, because she's the one that proposed the whole idea of them being engaged, which, you know, was very, very interesting. And also we heard about the fact that, you know, there's a situation where when they were together, she was still on sites. But also at the same time, though, it is also revealed that he was also on sites too. So there's a level of infidelity that may be happening on both sides. We don't know that for sure, for sure. But based on next week's preview, it seems as if his infidelity is the one that pops up. So that's going to be quite interesting. Yeah. But either way, though, you guys let me know exactly what you're thinking right now, because as far as I'm concerned, this guy right here, <laughs> accountability is not his friend. He must be the wrong gender. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Not kidding. Not. <laughs> anyway, with that being said, though, thank you so much for your time and we'll talk about it. Peace. Oh.